Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I'm BCAP, here with my colleague Ian H. at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle. If this is your first time tuning in to a Foldit Lab Report, we release these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science going on in Foldit. This month we have a special update from the laboratory where we've solved another crystal structure of a protein designed by Foldit players. This is the first ever look at a Foldit design protein that interacts with copies of itself. What we found in the lab wasn't exactly what we were expecting, but it was revealing. Before we get to those results though, let's first recap why we're interested in designing proteins that interact in the first place. One big research area in protein design is in protein materials. Eventually, we'd like to be able to create brand new materials out of custom proteins. We know from nature that proteins can form materials like spider silk or wool that combine amazing physical properties like softness, high tensile strength, and also the ability to decompose into harmless organic waste. If we're going to produce new protein materials that could someday replace things like plastics, then we'll need a way to make macroscopic materials out of millions of microscopic protein parts. Now, we could try to make millions of unique proteins that all assemble together to form our material, but that sounds like a lot of work. Instead, we use the same trick that nature uses when making protein materials, and that trick is symmetry. Symmetry is a shortcut that lets us copy one protein over and over again in a pattern to make a more complex material. If we had a robust toolbox of symmetric proteins, we could recombine them to form soccer ball-like cages, or hair-like fibers, or a flat two-dimensional array. When we started designing symmetric proteins in Foldit, we realized the problem. Foldit loves buried hydrophobics, whether these are hydrophobic residues in the core of a protein, or whether these are buried at the interface where two proteins interact. In Foldit, the best scoring designs were the designs with the largest hydrophobic interfaces. Now, in reality, a large hydrophobic surface on a protein means that the protein will be very sticky. This can lead to very tight binding when the protein encounters other copies of itself, but more often it means that the protein might misfold or will aggregate with anything that it encounters. In Foldit, we've been trying to solve this problem in two ways. The first is to limit the size of the interface between symmetric copies of a protein. These are the limited interface puzzles, which receive a penalty if there are too many residues buried at the interface. The second approach is to make the interfaces less hydrophobic by rewarding polar atoms at the interface that can be satisfied by hydrogen bond networks. Now, back to the crystal structure. This protein was originally designed by Ninja Gregg in puzzle 1864 as a symmetric trimer where three subunits come together into an assembly. This was one of our limited interface puzzles where we penalized designs that have too many residues buried at the protein interface. As chance would have it, this exact design was featured as a design of the month in a previous lab report last August. Again, the whole idea of the limited interface design puzzles is to reduce the size of the hydrophobic surfaces on individual subunits. Ninja Greg's design demonstrated exactly what we were looking for. The monomer unit is a three helix bundle and the surface of the protein is entirely polar except for two small hydrophobic patches where the protein can stick with other copies of itself. We solved the crystal structure of this protein in the lab and discovered something surprising. The protein in the crystal was assembled into a tetramer with four protein units interacting instead of the three like Ninja Greg designed. In fact, the crystallized tetramer has D2 symmetry, which is something we've just recently started challenging Foldit players to design. What's interesting to me is that the crystal interface uses the same hydrophobic patches that Ninja Greg included on his original design. But instead of assembling with the design head to tail arrangement, in the crystal, the subunits are flipped into a head to head and a tail to tail binding interface. This surprising result actually tells us a lot and also reminds us that protein design is really hard. Even though the monomer version of Ninja Greg's protein folded up exactly as designed, the monomers did not assemble in the way that we expected. The reason for this, biochemically speaking, is that the tetrameric interface must be more energetically favored than the design trimer interface. 
Even when we design an excellent looking interface like Ninja Greg's, there is always this possibility that an off-target interaction will be even better. This is always the case in protein design, and it's why we have to experimentally test the proteins that we design on the computer. There's no way for us to account for all of the off-target possibilities computationally. One takeaway from this surprising result is that the limited interface strategy may not be best. A better way to design accurate interactions between proteins may be the other approach, and we should rely on hydrogen bond networks to lock in the desired arrangement of proteins and block off unwanted arrangements. If Ninja Greg's hydrophobic interfaces had included more polar atoms in a network, then those polar atoms might have become buns in the off-target tetramer. In this way, we can use buns to our advantage. Now, it may seem disappointing that the protein we studied here did not match the design model from Folded. In a certain sense, it means that something went wrong. But it's important to remember that this is how science works. When an experiment doesn't go the way you thought it would, that's a new piece of information that you can use to better understand the world. And that is science in action. So thank you to Ninja Greg for this particular design, and also to everyone who's been participating in our symmetric design puzzles. We'll be seeing lots more just like this in the coming months. And that brings us to some quick puzzle updates. Last month, we actually saw a lot of symmetric limited interface design puzzles with D2 symmetry just like that crystal structure. But in light of the crystal structure, we'll probably be focusing more on hydrogen bond networks in coming puzzles. We also saw more binder design puzzles against a host of targets like TI2, the TGF beta receptor, and the IL2 receptor. And finally, our collaborators have been sharing a steady stream of electron density puzzles. So I think we can expect to see more of those as well. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month we have a design from puzzle 1998. This is a symmetric tetramer with D2 symmetry. This design is from an anonymous player and will remind players to fill out our username sharing form if you haven't already. This design has D2 symmetry, which means that our subunit here has two unique interfaces and each of them will be symmetric in its own right. So at this first interface, we see that it has some good hydrophobic packing with the neighboring subunits, so that looks like a tight binding interface. And the same with this second interface, again looks very nice. We have these two tyrosine residues that stack nicely against one another. Um, I don't really see any buried polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. Even this tyrosine, I think, can access the solvent surrounding the protein. I also wanna point out that this is a very, very unique fold that this player has designed. Um, we don't see very many folds like this with two separate beta sheets that kind of sandwich around a single alpha helix. Um, but it does look like the protein core is well packed and I don't see any edges, beta edge strands that need to be satisfied. Um, so this looks like a reasonable monomer to me. If we do look at the buns, the, the buns Objective does flag a few buried polar atoms in this design. So we want to watch out for, uh, these look like they're mostly backbone atoms on secondary structure that can't quite make the necessary hydrogen bond. So I might worry about that a little bit. The only other concern I would have with this design is that if we look at the monomer unit alone, we see that it actually has quite a bit of exposed hydrophobics on both sides of these beta sheets. This is a lot of hydrophobic surface area that I would be a little bit worried about. Uh, I, I might expect this protein would misfold in the cell or would aggregate. But then again, if it does fold up as designed, I think it would bind very tightly with its symmetric partners. So all in all, this looks like a, a, a very cool design. Um, I, I would hope that players could maybe take this fold, overall fold, and try to incorporate more polar residues onto the interface and try to reduce the amount of exposed hydrophobic surface on each monomer unit. Please always share your favorite solutions with scientists. We love to see what you think is the best design that you can come up with, regardless of how it scores. That's all we have for this month. In July, you can look forward to office hours from Siren and myself. 
As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.